This patient is yet another patient who came to my office seeking cosmetic dentistry. He has so many things that can be addressed or should be addressed that it's almost difficult to pinpoint or pick out one item that stands out more than any other item. He is a typical case of accelerated wear. What does accelerated wear mean? It means that teeth are worn, have flattened incisal edges and very sharp line angles as seen here and here. These teeth are worn. This is also a sign of age. Age teeth are worn naturally. However, in a mouth that has accelerated wear, we basically see premature aging. Another aspect of accelerated wear is the gummy smile. A patient who comes in with severely worn teeth often has a lot of gum visible between the upper lip and the teeth. How is that correlated? Teeth that are worn want to be in the same relationship to the lower teeth as they were before. Without going too much into prosthetic dentistry and how teeth relate to each other, it is enough to say that when teeth get worn here at the edge, they have the tendency of moving towards the opposing teeth this way. So that the incisal edge basically always has about the same position in relation to the lower teeth. The one thing that happens when teeth grow out so that the incisal edge basically is at the same position is the gums follow. So with the uh, growth of the teeth out of uh, their sockets, the gums follow this way. To address a case like this, we will not just prepare the teeth for veneers. And without going too much into the complexities of uh, the treatment planning and the approach, I want to keep it as simple as possible because this is a presentation for the public. I need to point out that prior to placing veneers, the gums need to be addressed. And I mentioned this already uh, on my blackboard drawings, that this is a very important aspect of smile design. So what I have to do in this case is re-establishing where the gum line should be at the end of my treatment. And of course, it will be done all very meticulously so that there's absolute symmetry, which with my freehand drawing may not be as apparent. But we want to get the gums, and you can see there is an asymmetry between here and there. There's more gum visible here, so we don't even need to trim there. But we need to trim probably a little bit more here and then a little bit more here. And this all is done with a surgical procedure called gum lift or crown lengthening involving the trimming of the gums and the underlying bone. I'm going to spare you the surgical pictures of this process. After that, after we have established the uh, desired gum position, then we can say, all right, where do we want to establish the incisal edge? Do we want to make it a little longer? How do we want the uh, final teeth uh, to look like? We have to close the space. This is another aspect of this patient's smile. He has diastemas. So we have a lot of space in this direction and we have a lot of space up here at the incisal edge. So if we want to lengthen the teeth just by this amount and then close the spaces and go just like this and then we lengthen them by this amount and go around like this. 
and we lengthen those teeth here just a little bit to make it more straight and create the same distance on this side and make this one a little bit longer creating a good length to width relationship and there is a desirable length relationship a length to width relationship for central incisors and as I already mentioned before we want to develop a golden proportion which is a ratio of 1.6 to 1 to 0.6 on both sides 1.6 to 1 to 0.6 so when you look on the teeth from the front the surfaces that you see should have a ratio of 1 to 6 to 1 or 1 to 0.6 then you have a golden proportion in a smile what else is going on? Decalcifications. Which color do I pick? I think I pick the green color. So we have decalcifications here and here and here and here. Split staining, giving us an, an idea about the um, habits regarding oral hygiene that this patient has, and it's not the best. And uh, maybe a slight alignment of this tooth, it's sticking out here a little bit more than it is sticking out there. And as I already explained in the earlier part of this lecture, we will have to reduce the tooth a little bit more here. And uh, we can be more conservative here. And we will place porcelain all the way up to the gum line. Okay. Now I'm going to show you the after picture. This is what he ended up with. We closed the spaces, we established or we eliminated the gummy smile, we established polychromaticity, so we have several different colors um, that make teeth look natural, so we have a little bit more yellowness here and then we have a transition in coloring towards the incisal edge. Here we have the translucency, which is slightly bluish. And then at the very end, we have what is called a halo effect. And this is important for creating a youthful look in a patient's smile. The spaces are closed. We also have a transition of the incisal embrasures from small to larger to even larger. So the angles are opening up from here to here. And we have the same here from this angle to this angle to this angle. The better we follow these scientific principles, the more the smile appears youthful. Without really anyone knowing why a smile looks more youthful or healthier. But those are all aspects of a youthful smile. The other thing that we see is we have a sharper line angle here and we have a rounder line angle here. We have a sharper line angle here and we have a rounder line angle here. So all these things uh, need to be understood by the lab technician to create a youthful smile.